Thomas Sankara, often referred to as the African Che Guevara, was a remarkable figure in African history. Born on December 21, 1949, in Yako, French Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso, Sankara's life was marked by a passionate commitment to social justice, anti-imperialism, and pan-Africanism. From his early education to his military career and eventual rise to power, Sankara's journey was one of unwavering dedication to the betterment of his people. His radical policies and progressive reforms aimed to transform Burkina Faso into a self-sufficient, egalitarian society. However, his life was tragically cut short when he was assassinated on October 15, 1987, at the young age of 37. In this edition of History Untold, we delve into the key aspects of his life, shedding light on his life achievements, betrayal, and tragic death, as well as the lasting legacies he left behind. If you're a first-time visitor, we say welcome, and also a warm thank you to our returning visitors. Please kindly support us to make more videos like this by subscribing. Do not forget to like, comment and turn on the video notification by clicking the bell icon. Early Life and Education Born Thomas Isidore Sankara into a lower middle class family of mixed Mossi and Fulani heritage. Sankara was the third of the ten children born to Joseph and Marguerite Sankara. His father was a gendarme and of mixed Mossi Fulani descent. Sankara's mother was of pure Mossi origins and a traditional healer. He mostly grew up in Gawa, where his father was posted as an auxiliary gendarme. Sankara's upbringing played a significant role in shaping his worldview and fueling his desire for change. He hailed from a modest background, with his father being a civil servant and his mother a traditional healer. Sankara's primary education took place in his hometown, where he excelled academically and demonstrated a keen interest in subjects like history and political science. His father wanted him to become a priest and encouraged him to join a seminary school after finishing primary school. Though Sinkara agreed to do so initially, he later cleared the exam for entering the sixth grade in the secular school system. His thirst for knowledge led him to further his education at the prestigious Lycée Philippe Zinder Kabore in the capital city of Ouagadougou. Military career and rise to power After completing his secondary education at the young age of 17 in 1966, Sinkara enrolled in the military academy of Kadiogo in Ouagadougou thus marking the beginning of his military career. He quickly rose through the ranks due to his exceptional leadership skills and unwavering commitment to his ideals. But before then, sown events occurred that would forever shape his worldview and his commitment to social justice of his people. Aged 17, he was witness to the first military coup d'etat in Upper Volta, presided over by Lieutenant Colonel Sangale Lamazana. In 1970, aged 20, Sinkara went for an officer's training at Ansarabe Bay in Madagascar. There, he saw firsthand a revolt of students and workers that managed to oust Madagascar's government. He later graduated from the institute as a junior officer. After his military service, he continued his studies in France and Morocco, where he met fellow students from Upper Volta who shared his leftist ideologies. Sankara's growing political consciousness led him to organize the communist officers group within the army. He also actively participated in leftist parties, unions, and student groups, further solidifying his commitment to socialist principles. During this time, Sankara fought in a border war with Mali, earning recognition and respect as a hero upon his return. His military training and experiences would later shape his approach to governance. It was during this period the young Sinkara caught the attention of Captain Blaise Compaoré, who would later become his ally, friend and eventual betrayal. In 1981, Sinkara briefly held the position of Secretary of State for Information under the newly formed Military Committee for Reform and Military Progress CMRPN. However, he quickly resigned from this post and denounced the CMRPN. Following another military coup, Sankara was appointed Prime Minister in 1983 but was swiftly dismissed and placed under house arrest, sparking a popular uprising. The August Revolution On August 4, 1983, Sankara's former ally, Blaise Compaoré, orchestrated what came to be known as the August Revolution. This coup d'etat led to the establishment of the National Council for the Revolution, CNR, with Thomas Sankara assuming the presidency at the age of 34. As president, Sankara was determined to bring about radical societal changes and improve the lives of the Burkinabe people. In 1984, marking the first anniversary of his presidency, Sankara renamed the country Burkina Faso, which meant the land of upright people, Indula and Moray, 
the two main languages of the country. He also wrote the country's new national anthem, Un Sule Nuit, and gave it a new flag. He ruled as the president for four years and transformed the country significantly. He slowly came to be known as Africa's Che Guevara, Sankara's vision and achievements. Sankara's presidency was marked by his unwavering commitment to combating corruption, promoting reforestation, averting famine, advancing women's rights, developing rural areas, and prioritizing education and healthcare. He believed in the self-sufficiency of Burkina Faso and rejected foreign aid packages that came with strings attached. Sankara famously stated, the one who feeds you usually imposes his will upon you. He aimed to create a society where the Burkinabe people could sustain themselves and break free from the chains of neocolonialism. Under Sankara's leadership, Burkina Faso witnessed significant advancements in various sectors. The country experienced a surge in cereal production, with a 75% increase in the first three years of his presidency. Sankara implemented land nationalization policies and invested heavily in agriculture, laying the foundation for sustainable economic growth. He initiated a tree planting campaign to combat desertification and tackled public health issues through large-scale vaccination programs. Education reforms. One of Sankara's most notable achievements was his commitment to education. He believed that education was the key to unlocking the potential of Burkina Faso's youth and building a prosperous future. To that end, he launched a nationwide literacy campaign, mobilizing teachers and students to eradicate illiteracy. The campaign was a resounding success with thousands of Burkinabe gaining access to education and acquiring vital skills for their personal and professional growth. Healthcare reforms. Sankara recognized the dire state of healthcare in Burkina Faso and made it a priority to improve access to quality medical services. He initiated a comprehensive healthcare program that focused on preventive care, public health education, and the establishment of medical facilities in rural areas. Sankara's government also launched a successful vaccination campaign significantly reducing the prevalence of diseases such as tuberculosis and meningitis. Women's rights. Sankara was a staunch advocate for gender equality and actively worked towards dismantling the barriers that hindered women's progress. He appointed women to key government positions and encouraged their active participation in decision-making processes. Sankara's government also implemented policies to combat gender-based violence and promote women's economic empowerment. His emphasis on women's rights was groundbreaking in a region where gender inequality was deeply entrenched. Betrayal and assassination. Despite his remarkable achievements, Sankara's commitment to progressive ideals and anti-imperialism made him enemies both within and outside Burkina Faso. His refusal to bow down to external pressures and his focus on self-reliance threatened the interests of powerful entities. His close ally and former friend, Blaise Compaoré, grew disillusioned with the revolution and plotted to remove Sankara from power. On October 15, 1987, tragedy struck as Sankara and 12 other officials were killed in a coup d'etat orchestrated by Compaoré. Sankara was only 37 years old at the time of his death, leaving a void in Burkina Faso and a legacy cut short. Legacies and Impact Decades after his death, Thomas Sankara continues to inspire people across the globe. His unwavering commitment to social justice, anti-imperialism, and pan-Africanism resonates with those advocating for a more equitable world. Sankara's legacy can be seen in the continued admiration and reverence he receives as the father of the revolution and the symbol of a progressive Africa. His ideals and achievements have sparked movements and influenced leaders beyond Burkina Faso, leaving an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of the continent. The Quest for Justice in the years following Sankara's assassination, Aziz Fall, a young activist in Montreal, Canada, became dedicated to seeking justice for Sankara. Fall, along with other activists and Sankara's family, launched campaigns and legal battles to uncover the truth behind his death. They called for an investigation into the assassination and demanded accountability for those responsible. Although progress has been slow, there have been some significant developments in the quest for justice. In 2014, Burkina Faso experienced a popular uprising that led to the ousting of Blaise Compaoré from power. The transitional government that followed allowed an inquest into Sankara's death and exhumed his presumed remains. While DNA tests proved inconclusive, the investigation led to the indictment of 12 individuals connected to the assassination. Compaoré, who fled to Côte d'Ivoire, remains at large, but efforts to hold him accountable continue. Sankara's Ideals Today 
Thomas Sankara's ideals and principles continue to inspire social and political movements worldwide. His emphasis on self-reliance, equality, and justice resonates with those fighting against oppression and inequality. Sankara's commitment to environmental sustainability, gender equality, and social welfare remain relevant in the face of global challenges. In Burkina Faso, Sankara's legacy lives on through the efforts of grassroots activists, artists, and musicians who keep his memory alive through their work. His speeches and writings continue to be studied and celebrated, serving as a reminder of the transformative power of individuals who dare to challenge the status quo. Rounding up this edition, it's worthy to note that Thomas Sankara's life was tragically cut short, but his impact and legacy endure. From his humble beginnings to his meteoric rise to power, Sankara exemplified the power of visionary leadership and unwavering commitment to social justice. His achievements in education, healthcare, and women's rights transformed Burkina Faso and inspired generations of Africans. While his untimely death robbed the world of a remarkable leader, his ideas and ideals continue to inspire and guide those who seek a more just and equitable future. Thomas Sankara remains a beacon of hope and a symbol of resistance, reminding us of the power of one individual to ignite change.